everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. I'm so glad to be here with you. Today I want to show you how to set up your FlySky radio. In this case it's a FlySky FS i6X. I believe this would be exactly the same for the i6. And I'm going to show you how to set it up so that you can use a twin motor setup or a dual motor if you will. And then I'm going to show you how to set it up so that you can uh, actually use differential thrust so you can have a left motor and a right motor and that's going to help you yaw your airplane uh, left and right. So let's get started. First let's go over the setup that we have here. We have a motor, an ESC, and it's connected to our receiver. We have another motor here, an ESC, also connected to our receiver. Now for the receiver connections, now we're using a FSIA6 receiver. You're going to want to use something uh, that has more than four channels, so probably a six channel receiver. In this case, this is six channels, so it works just fine. As far as how to uh, connect the, the uh, two ESCs, you want one ESC in the channel three uh, servo slot here, and then you want the next one in, pro well, channel five or channel six. I I'm going to put this one in channel five, and so the one in your channel three slot, think of that as your, uh, I, I like to think of that as my primary motor, uh, because channel 3 is usually your throttle channel, so that's going to be your primary motor, and then the channel 5 is going to be your secondary channel. And then of course you could set up your uh, channel 1, channel 2, and channel 4, just like for a normal uh, airplane setup, or however you want to set that up. Now, these two motors are very different motors, and you would not want to use these in a a twin motor setup, but this is just for demonstration purposes because this is an Emax 1806 2280 KV, and this right here is a Leopard Hobby uh, LC 2835 1160 KV. So big, huge difference. Also, the ESCs are different as well. This is an Emax, and this is a Hobby King. So just just so you know, that's what I'm working with here. Okay, I have a new model here. We're going to go through the binding process super quickly. We're going to get our binding plug. We're going to insert it into our receiver in the very top uh, slot. We're going to take a battery and connect it to our ESC to power the receiver. You should see a blinking light. You might not be able to see it. There should be a blinking red light. It's blinking rapidly. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn off our transmitter. We're going to uh, put all the switches in the up position. We're going to hold down the bind button, turn on our transmitter, and it should bind just like that. If it doesn't, try uh, t taking the transmitter a few feet away. Sometimes that helps. And then what we're going to do is take out our bind plug, and then we should hear some beeps. Side note, always remove your propellers when you're working with motors and stuff. Uh, it's just not worth it having them on there and chopping up your fingers or something else. Okay, now we can unplug the battery because we don't need to do this uh, mess with that stuff. For We don't need to mess with that stuff for a little while. We're going to get into the transmitter here. So what we're going to do is we're going to press and hold cancel to get into the main menu here. We're going to go over to the functions setup. We're going to press OK to get into there. We're going to scroll down to the mixes. Press OK. Now we're gonna, let's do mix one first and then I'll show you what happens after that. So we're going to press OK to scroll through these different items. So we're gonna uh, say mix one is on. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna say the, the master is channel three because that's our throttle channel. That's the throttle channel right here. So the, the master is going to be channel three. The slave, uh, the channel that is going to be tied into the throttle channel is going to be channel 5 and we want channel 5 because that's what the other motor is connected to on the servo and then we're going to uh, for the positive mix we're going to bump this all the way up to 100 percent for the negative mix we're going to bump this up to 100 percent and for the offset oddly enough it's uh, going to be positive 44 percent that's what I found to work really well with my setup, uh, your setup may be different. I'm not sure if it's just because of the different ESCs or motors or something like that, but it's going to be something like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to press and hold cancel. Let's go back in and make sure it's saved, okay? Because you, when you press and hold cancel, it saves it. It's weird, I know. Now let's test it out. All right, I'm going to get a weight and just weigh down this 
one here because it tends to kind of spin around on me. It's not the most ideal setup, I know. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect the battery to both of the each ESC. We get some beeps from that one. We're going to get some beeps from this one when I connect this. Might take a little bit. There we go. A. So now what we should have is when we raise the throttle, both of them should spin up at the same time. Something like that. So you can see I'm just raising the throttle just a little bit here. And there is there is kind of some dead space. I'm not sure if I can really get rid of that too much in terms of movement of the throttle before before the motors actually react. <clears throat> so what you kind of want to do is is get it the 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 goal when when setting this up is to make it so that both motors start up at the same time and have basically the same uh, keep the same percentage like of of power. So let's go to full power here. Now I think that's working pretty good. Honestly, I don't really have. Well, I do have a way of measuring it, but um, I'm not really going to bother with that right now. But pretty much, if you have identical motors, you can tell, you know, that they're going to be, you know, working the same. So that is how you set up just a standard uh, twin motor configuration here. Now let me show you what this does if we play play around with some of these items. So here you have the offset. So when the offset, let me scoot this over here so make sure you can see this it affects this this motor because this is the one that we're tying in this is kind of our secondary motor on channel 5 so as far as the offset right here so it's currently 44 if we adjust that like right as we get these motors to start up so let's just do that okay so then if we adjust the offset here to 43 42 and our secondary motor channel 5 motor has stopped so that's why like if you get it let's say let's say the offset was you know, 30, or it could be zero or something like that. You're gonna have to move your throttle that far before before you actually get the second motor to start up. So that's why what you kinda wanna do is get it to where your first motor just starts up and then increase or decrease. I think, I think it's gonna be increased, but in, in my case, it's increase the offset until the secondary motor starts up. So that's right about 40, 43, 44. Yeah, that looks about right. And 44 seems a little bit more consistent. Yeah, so right about 43, 44% for mine. Yours may vary. I know it's kind of a weird thing. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but um, I think this should give you a pretty good idea of how to get yours working. All right, now we're going to talk about differential thrust. So again, differential thrust is uh, the goal for that is we want our motors to help us yaw the the airplane. So uh, that way, you know, you might be able to do cool spins, or you just have more control over it, uh, like a, like a flat spin. Anyway, so what we want to do is we want to have it so that if if we imagine that these are our motors, where we have the you know a left motor and a right motor, as we do, we don't actually have to imagine that. Uh, what we want to do is get it so that these are paired up on the yaw, or they're controlled by our yaw. Uh, stick here, which is going to be uh, right yaw and left yaw. So basically, we're going to point the nose to the right or point the nose to the left. So what we actually want is when we turn, move the stick to the left, we want our right motor to spin up, so it will cause our airplane to kind of you know whip over uh, in the left-hand direction because our, our right motor is spinning up, so it's giving it that extra push on the right side. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go back into our mixes. And then we're going to uh, scroll to mix two. So we're in mix two. What we want to do is use the OK button to kind of scroll down through these. We're going to turn it on. Let's see, the master is going to be channel four. And again, um, it doesn't matter exactly you know, the, which mix number you use. It, it, as long as you have the right you know, inputs in here, you should be good to go. So and again, these the channel will will change depending on what channel you actually have the uh, the ESC plugged into into the receiver. So we're gonna have mix two on. The master is going to be channel four. And the reason why we want the master to be channel four is because this is our uh, this is our yaw channel for our yaw stick right there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have positive mix one hundred percent. 
and then negative mix is going to be zero. Zero. And then offset is going to be zero as well. We can press and hold cancel to save. We can get back in there and that is on and working. Let's go to mix three. You only have three mixes, so this is going to take up all of your mixes. So um, you might be out of luck if you're trying to do other, some other kind of mixing, like flaperons or something like that. So we're going to scroll through here. We're going to turn this on. We're going to say master is channel four again. And then the slave is going to be channel five, which is our secondary motor. Now for this one, we're going to have the positive mix be zero. And then we're going to have the negative mix be uh, actually negative 100. And then we have zero offset. I'm going to press and hold cancel to save it. And now we should be good to go. So let's test this out. If we want to turn the airplane to the right, our left motor spools up. If we want to turn the airplane to the left, our right motor spools up. And so the, the thing about this is you want to make sure that you don't have both motors spinning when you yaw in either direction. So that's the reason for changing the, uh, the positive and negative values like we did because we actually, you know, once we're, once we're centered, we don't want any of them spinning. And then when we go to the right, we don't want the right one spinning. And when we go to the left, we don't want the left one spinning. So that's how it works. So now you can give it full throttle and have both of these going. And then if you want to turn left, that one spools up. If you want to turn right, that one spools up. There you go. That's how you do uh, a twin motor setup and differential thrust on the FlySky FSI-6X. And again, we're using the FSIA-6 six-channel FlySky receiver. Hope this video was helpful for you uh, FlySky users out there. I'll catch you on the next one.